Hello and welcome to Baijiu's exam prep IIS. As part of your knowledge series today, we'll be discussing the model elemental reforms. Uh, model elemental reforms itself is a very important topic because of what we call as separate electorates and how communal representation comes to India. But basically, it has a larger context in which it was produced. So, in order to understand what is called Indian Council Act of 1909 or model elemental reforms itself, you need to understand the larger picture of the national movement. Which is that first, you understand that basically the Swadeshi movement had happened between 1905-1906 in which there was a new type of nationalism which was introduced in India. On the other hand, the INC itself had got split up between the moderates and the extremists. And this means that in Indian nationalism itself, there was a new type of force coming through. So the first point is that moderates at this point of time will become alienated from the extremist faction itself. And the Swadeshi movement will show to the British that there can be a unified response in that regard. So basically, Swadeshi movement and the Indian National Congress getting split up in the Surat session itself, it itself gives you the context in which you need to understand the moral elemental reforms in the first place, which is moderates and extremists have been splitting up. And over and above that, the Swadeshi movement has happened in the background, which tells us what? That the basic national movement has moved into a new type of phase, which technically gives you the British context of what is happening in Indian nationalism. On the other hand, when we talk about the constitutional history, the Indian Council Act of 1861 and 1892 were already there. And basically, neither of them had been able to satisfy the moderates and their basic demands. So in order to understand what 1909 does, which is more limited reform does, it is important to understand what is the basic structure of the whole imperial state or the colonial state itself. Which is that via the Indian Council Act of 1865 and 92, there were two basic structures which were there in the center and in the provinces. So in the center, we have the Viceroy. Under the Viceroy, we have two councils. One is called the Central Executive Council. And the other one is called the Central Legislative Council. Basically, Viceroy has a separate executive and a legislative council. On the other hand, this is the central level. At the provincial level, the governor works through his own council, but directly under him, there is only the legislative council. So basically, the lawmaking is happening in the Legislative Council, but at the end of the day, the governor has all the say. But here, Viceroy has a very clear-cut division between Central Executive Council and Central Legislative Council. The governor works through his basic deputies, but he does not have a separate Executive Council. This needs to be clear, which is that there are two basic structures in which we are working, that there can be changes in this or there can be changes in this. So this is the structure which had been evolving since the Regulating Act of 1774. And by 1892, we have the basic structure like this, which is Viceroy, Executive Council, Legislative Council, Governor, Legislative Council. Now, first is Swadeshi has changed the nationalism itself. Moderate extremists have split up. Now, what happens in the background is another type of force which starts to rise in Indian nationalism or generally in India at this point of time, which is the rise of Muslim representation based leaders, which is that the immediate context for the 1909 act is actually the what is called the Shimla deputation. The Shimla deputation, which was sent in October of 1906. It was led by Aga Khan and these were very important Muslim intellectuals and Muslim leaders who went and met Minto and argued to him that there was a need 
to introduce a system of representation which could exclusively give more representation to Muslims because Muslim interest was not being protected or being represented by the INC. And this similar deputation and the leaders will become very, very important in the Muslim League itself by December of 1906 when it will rise. Basically, the similar deputation was the push and the pressure on the Indian, uh, on the Indian British government, which is that there is need to introduce a form of representation which gives more representation to Muslims because they were arguing that in the larger scheme of Indian politics with the rise of the provincial legislative council the Muslims are not getting full representation. So the first is this Shimla deputation concept that the separate electorate concept is going to be pushed from there. On the other hand Gopal Krishna Gokhale will go to London and actually speak to Morley and argue that there was a need to further give constitutional concessions and introduce representative self-rule. However, it was never the intention of Morley or Minto to actually do anything concrete. But basically, Morley-Minto reforms are part of this larger story of the what are called the Indian Council Act of 61, 92 and 1909. Morley-Minto reforms in 1909. Basically, the context is much more interesting and important because what you see is just this pressure being translated into that. So basically Swadeshi movement first, second the moderate and extremist tussle which is happening, on the other hand the basic structure. So when we talk about the context of the act itself, in October of 1906 a group of Muslim elites called the Shimla deputation led by Aga Khan himself met Lord Minto and demanded separate electorates for Muslims therefore asking for representation meaning that we want more representation and we want in a way exclusive representation because we, feel, we, we believe that in the larger story of Indian nationalism we are not getting full or right type of representation. On the other hand Gopal Krishna Gokhale will go to England and he will meet the Secretary of State John Morley to put the Congress demand of self-governing system similar to that of other British colonies and these two technically will produce what we call as the Morley Minto reforms or the Indian Council Act of 1909 as the reforms itself will take that form by 1909. Now basically both Minto who is the Viceroy and Morley who is the Secretary of State technically over a period of time between 1906 and 1909 were contemplating how to integrate these two demands together and I would not say that they directly came to this conclusion that there should be separate electorates but basically the tussle was between what is called joint and separate electorates and I'll tell you what these two words mean when I'll talk about separate electorates itself as a part of the provisions but basically there's a major understanding that should we just reserve the seat or should we just nominate the member or should we go for joint or separate electorate. There were four options technically available to Morley Minto both that should we just reserve a seat for a Muslim that a seat within the legislative council would become reserved or would should it be that the community itself nominates the person no elections for that or should we go for the concept of reserving the seat also and giving separate electorate also which is the more important point which we need to understand and there's a lot of pressure on the Indian government the British Indian government that separate electorates was one of the demands which the Muslim League by this point of time was pushing first the similar deputation and then the Muslim League and the INC on the other hand was trying to push away from separate electorates and asking for joint electorates and we'll talk about these two words what they mean but basically it was about keeping the moderates and both the Muslim community very very happy and technically meeting the demands though it was technically a post dated check and in a way nobody was actually happy in the end uh, and at the end of the day they had no intention of giving any, any form of self rule that will only come through the Montague claims for reforms. The basic point is that Morley Minto were under a lot of pressure to do something about this larger demand and because the Swadeshi movement had already happened remember 
there was a new type of urgency in the British politics because they knew what now Indian politics and Indian nationalism could do. Because this is the difference between 1892 or 1861 that at this point of time nationalism is in a nascency state. It is just moderate politics. But by the time we come to 1905-1909 the British have now seen a new type of nationalism. So basically the measures which will come out of all this deliberation are called the Morley Minto reforms and they will later translate into what we call as Indian Council Act of 1909. So don't get confused, this is the same thing. Basically, understand this because a lot of students what they do is they study Morley Minto or even Indian Council Acts in isolation. Each of them have a concept of, each of them have a concept of a context and that context is very very important. So basically, Swadeshi, moderate extremist politics, similar deputation, and Gopal Krishna Gokhale and generally this pressure on the government of India. Now, and one thing is clear that the structure was Viceroy, Executive Council, Legislative Council, Governor, Legislative Council because when I will talk about the provisions it will presume that you know the basic structure and remember some form of indirect election was already introduced by 1892 but by this point of time the proper election, indirect elections by 1892, by this point of time elections properly were being considered with limited franchise. Now, what were the provisions? What were the provisions of the Morley Minto reforms? Okay. First, there was considerable increase in the size of the legislative council, both central and provincial. Basically, we don't remember the provincial because provinces, there are nine different provinces at this point of time, you will obviously not learn each one of them. But the central legislative council would, was raised from 16 to 60 members, which is central legislative council. Remember, meaning Viceroy's legislative council has been increased. You will see two numbers in the books, one will say 60, one will say 69. Technically, it was 69 members were nominated, but basically it was 60 to 69 members in the Central Legislative Council. On the other hand, there was expansion in the Provincial Legislative Council, but we are not going to learn that. This is being smart because there are nine different figures which you need to learn, but there was an expansion. At least 20 to 30 seats and in some places even 15 seats were added in, in each of the Provincial Legislative Councils. On the other hand, in the Central Legislative Council, official majority is retained, meaning what do you mean by official and non-official? Official means that the British still has majority, meaning that the Central Legislative Council, even though there are 60, 69 members, the members which are British outnumber the members which are Indian. So technically it is an official majority, Be basically that is called official majority, that the British officers have more say and more number, so the official majority is retained. On the other hand, the non-official means that the Indians outnumber the Britishers, which was technically true for the Provincial Legislative Council. So remember, Provincial Legislative Council, Indians are now outnumbering the Britishers. However, there was still the fact that the governor had veto, so nothing really technically mattered and they were, had very limited functions, but still they outnumbered and in Central Legislative Council, the Britishers are outnumbering the Indians. So basically, first is that they were conceiving to the demand that we need further representation. So the moderate, so the moderate demand so the moderate demand of the fact that we want increase in representation that has been done at this point of time that they've increased the legislative and central and central legislative council and provincial legislative council and official majority and non-official majority is retained and not retained. So in the way that it's just a basic demand which has gone through. Now the more interesting is what technically happens in the executive council which is for the first time after asking in 1861 also, in 1892 also, for the first time in the central or viceroy's executive council, which was exclusively official, no Indian member was there, for the first time 
now an indian entered the executive council of the viceroy and the governors but specifically viceroy governor is still having some indian representation but viceroy's executive council never had it and this is a very important point and satendra prasad sinha becomes the first indian to join the viceroy's executive council he was a law member and this is very significant because law making was all a sham it was just how the british used to give us a drama or a lollipop that you do what you want to do in legislative council it had no real power it was the executive council which had all the real power because the viceroy used to control it and the executive council executes these laws and it has real power so basically the executive council having an indian is a very important point so again two very significant points need to be there first that we have increased second that executive council for the first time has an indian member again a very very significant point very important point on the other hand the powers of both the central and provincial legislatures were enlarged and the basic point was they could pass resolutions which may or may not be accepted again ask questions and supplementaries basic parliamentary procedure vote separate items in the budget through the budget as a whole could not be voted upon only 25% of the budget they could actually even discuss and vote upon so basically all this is just a wheel of fake power there's no real there's no real power which is being transferred so the whole 1909 Indian Council Act is just a big sham. It's a just a big farce. That one they have increased, which is was still very very inadequate. Second, they have allowed one Indian to enter the Vice Lords Executive Council, which is still official majority. On the other hand, they have enlarged the duties of the Legislative Councils in both centre and in provinces. However, basic basic things, things such as resolutions, supplementaries. all that had no meaning because at the end of the day the viceroy and the governor had veto powers so they could either accept it not accept it dismiss it and still the budget is not accepted now the basic point is for which that the if you remember for the exam morlemento reforms or indian council act is known for two things and this is what you will find in basic books one is called the entry of satendra prasad sinha and second is basically basically very basically called separate electorates and this is the most important feature of this reform morlemento reforms is known for one member into executive council that is one feature which will which is very very imperative on the other hand we have the concept of separate electorates now what is technically separate electorates now let's try to understand that and then we'll come back to the point a lot of students do understand it but don't understand the concept fully so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you what does separate electorates actually mean because this demand will first be only taken for the muslims later will be extended to sikhs uh, in the montague claims was from sikhs anglo indians europeans and then comes the most important which is in uh, which is in 1932 to even the depressed classes so you need to understand what does it technically mean to be having a separate electorate now there is a constituency for example there is a constituency it has 100 people right out of the 100 people 40 are hindus 60 not 60 not, not 60 40 are muslims and 20 are technically christians right so we have 40 40 20 40 hindus 40 muslims 20 christians perfect now this constituency has to elect one member into the provincial legislative council now what the british technically at the heart of this concept is it said that this seat is technically reserved for a muslim that's this seat is reserved for a muslim that if the 
the member will go into the provincial legislative council only a Muslim representative can go which is till today we also have what is called reserve seats that the seat is reserved so the seat is reserved for a Muslim now under reserve seat there are two ways first is what is called joint electorate and then this concept of what we call a separate electorate now what happens under joint electorate is for selecting this one member all the hundred people will vote so basically though this member has to be Muslim all the hundred Hindus Muslims and Christians all have to vote so this is called joint electorate which technically India has we have a reserve seat concept for the scheduled caste and scheduled, caste and scheduled tribe seat but everybody votes everybody votes which is that joint electorate everybody is going to vote however separate electorate is different what separate electorate is that because this one member is Muslim there's 40 Hindus 40 Muslims 20 Christians Hindus Muslims Christians the argument is only these 40 will select the Muslim leader and these two technically will got, will get alienated or disenfranchised basically separate electorate is that only the member of that community can vote for that seat if it is reserved for a specific community the same could be true the same could be true for example for a constituency in which Christians Christian seat so then only these 20 would vote for that one single representative now you can see the problem here and this is why the Indian National Congress and later Gandhi were not very comfortable with this concept because as soon as separate electorate comes through the basic electoral vote the the body which is 40 40 20 the elect electorate gets divided and this is part of what we call as divide and rule if the British wanted they're still giving a Muslim a seat through joint electorate but they specifically wanted and though the Muslim League will ask for it and they were asking the idea basically came from the British itself and the point was that though the seat is reserved for a Muslim or a Hindu or a Christian it's about how you divide the electorate basically now this one constituency the Hindu population and the Christian population has no say in the parliamentary procedure itself or the legislative council procedure basically this whole area power is wielded by the Muslims this can be separate electorates for Sikhs would mean which will which came later is that if there is a constituency with 40 40 and 40 Sikhs Sikhs will only elect the Sikh member same for Anglo Indian same for European and the, by the time we come, come to government of India Act 1935 they were giving it to women also that women also have separate electorate if a seat is reserved for a woman it will be only women will vote basically separate electorate is a dangerous concept because the reserve seat concept we still have our parliamentary procedure our constitution it embodies reserve seat that you reserve a seat for a specific community but we go for reserve seat joint electorate everybody is going to elect that person nobody is disenfranchised or cut out of the election procedure on the other hand separate electorate is dangerous because it is only that community which is going to vote so as it says it introduced a system of communal representation for Muslims by accepting the concept of separate electorate. so basically 1909 separate electorate concept is only extended to Muslims later it will be extended to remember Sikhs through the Montague claims for reform 1919 to Sikhs to the Anglo Indians to the Christians but by the time we come to 1932 it will be extended to the press classes Pune pact will happen and that will become reserve seats and by the time we come to 1935 government of India act it will be even extended to Muslims and workers now basic point uh, not, uh, not Muslim and workers women and workers basically under the system the Muslim members were to be elected only by Muslim voters 
remember separate electorate has the basic concept of reserved seat so there were technically in bengal legislative council 115 seats out of 150 seats were actually reserved for muslims but what was more dangerous was that all of these 115 seats were based on separate electorates so basically 115 constituencies only the muslims have a say who will become the representative and if it, it's not even the fact that the hindus are not not voting it's that their participation is totally gone and this would be true for later sikh dominated areas the problem is not that the Muslim League is asking for it. The, the Sikh politics will also ask for it. There will be Anglo-Indian, there will be Christian politics. The problem is not that. The problem is this concept itself is a problem. That separate electorates technically introduces a type of precedence which was dangerous. And that is why when we talk about moral elemental reform and Minto himself, he is the father of communal representation. Communal means community. So what the British were technically now trying to do, that though they were ready to give us more power in self-rule, they were also dividing us at the same point of time. So though they are giving us election as a form of representation and enlarging the legislative council, they were making sure that Hindu-Muslim politics, Hindu-Sikh politics, Sikh-Muslim politics was dominated by factionalism because when you separate the seat after being reserved, which is a separate electorate concept, what you do is that you technically disenfranchise a certain section of the society. And that is why the moral elemental reforms is considered a very dangerous document. So, the real essence, the real essence of the moral elemental reforms is actually captured by a very important quote. Lord Morley made it clear that colonial self-government as demanded by the Congress was not suitable for India. And he was against the introduction of parliamentary and responsible government in India. Basically, it was Morley himself, the Secretary of State. And this is the difference between the uh, Montague Clemsworth reforms and Morley Minto reforms. By the time we come to Montague Clemsworth, the concept of Swaraj was accepted. Here, Swaraj is totally denied. So, if it could be said that this chapter of reforms led directly or indirectly to the establishment of a parliamentary system in India, I, for one, would have nothing to do at all with it. Basically, he was just trying to meet the demands of the moderates and the Shimla deputation. But what this whole act did was a very dangerous precedence in our basic, basic electoral election process. So just to summarize, before I go to the questions, just to summarize, moral into reforms is important because you need to understand in the context of Swadeshi, and the Shimla deputation and you also need to understand it in the context of extremist politics this is the context then comes the basic drama which Morley Minto are doing so what is the first provision enlargement they enlarge the central and provincial legislative council second they allow one member into the viceroy's executive council then they give basic powers to the provincial and legislative councils, uh, provincial and central legislative council, which is basic powers of supplementary resolutions, but no real power. And then comes the fourth most important concept, which is separate electorates. Separate electorates to Muslims. Remember, because the UPSC plays with this quite a lot. It will add comma, comma. You need to know in 1909, only extended to Muslims. Separate electorate concept, very simple. Reserved seat is there. Then in a reserve seat, only that community is going to vote for that candidate. No, no one else will. This is the difference between joint electorate and separate electorates. When it is joint electorate, everybody votes even if the seat is reserved, which is our Indian constitution. On the other hand, we have separate electorates, which is the concept that once a seat is reserved for a certain community, only that community is going to vote. And this is why Morley Minto reforms is considered a dangerous precedence. That is why Minto himself started something which is going to only go out of hand. And that is why by the time we come to 1930s, it was very, very clear that the British were succeeding because separate electorates was used in that way itself. So with this, I hope that separate electorates as a concept is totally clear in your mind. And basically, 
you need to just know that it was a dangerous precedence it is going to set. No other real thing happened in moral elemento reform except for the drama of giving them some form of free, some form of self-rule. Swaraj as a concept was not accepted, which will be accepted by Montague in 1990. Perfect. So let's look at the question. As I said, yes, Gaurav, the concept of indirect election already introduced in 92. By this point of time, with limited franchise, nominated and, rep and elected representative votes were there. Because that is a Rohit, the point is the, Mus, the, the Simla deputation, it was all an experiment. They wanted to check if it in 1909 Muslim separate electorates work well, then they want to further divide India. The British were trying to divide India. Even when they were giving us what is called democratic power, they are giving us democratic power in such a way that it disenfranchises certain communities. It was about to, it was just about to make sure that. All communities in India never came together because they knew one thing. If Indians come together, then there cannot be a British rule in India. They want to divide us because they want to prolong their rule. Dividing us is the only way of keeping British rule in India. The day and by 1940s when everybody came together, British were handful. We were a very, very big population. They wanted to make sure that India as a whole never became India only divided into certain communities. And that is why they started to uh, give it to Sikhs, to Christians, to Anglo-Indians. Okay, perfect. Okay. Please don't confuse first past the post system or proportional representation. That's a different type of system. That is about how do you win the election. Joint electorates and separate electorates is still basic. basic. That is a, how the voters are divided is technically joint and separate electorates. First pass the post system, proportional representation is how you win that election. Uh, please. What is the difference between all that? Yes, that's the whole point. There's a difference between only reserving the seat and giving more separate electorate. Remember this, there's a difference. Reserving the seat means that that seat will go to a certain community. For example, Sikh. That is okay. But everybody in that community votes for that Sikh candidate. If you create separate electorate, you technically create one more set in which only the Sikh community is going to vote, thereby disenfranchising everybody else in that constituency. The outcome of the reform is very simple, that now Muslim politics became in a way totally separated from INC. INC was technically fully, it technically alienated the Muslim agenda and now the Muslim League is going to start to embody the representation of Muslims but still the point is 1906 till 1936 Muslim League was nothing. It is only after the Second World War when Dinit Ghosh was going to start to technically push the Muslim League too much and by the Wavell Conference it became more or less clear that Muslim League had changed because their vote share was only 3%. In the 1935 elections, 35-36 elections, their vote share was only 3% Muslim League. By the time we come to 45 elections, they were having 86% of the vote share. That is all in Lidgo's politics. But basically, the outcome of the reform is that there is a new precedence which has been started, which is now every community will ask for a separate electorate because thereby creating this dangerous trend in Indian nationalism and Indian democracy. Okay. The INC is not in a position to accept it and not accept it. The INC did not accept it. But it is a government of India is going to implement it. They are not going to ask the INC. The INC did not accept it in any way. Perfect. So with this, thank you so much. I will see you very soon with decline of Mughals and Sufism. These are the two other topics which we are going to do this week. So I hope that now Morlem Minto is more or less clear. So I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.